Thank you so much for staying with us. Now let's look at the role religion has played in Nigeria politics. Actually, politics should be a game of issues, a game of those who have solutions to the challenges and the issues that the people are facing, those who have the interest of the people at heart. But the situation is different in countries like Nigeria where we have, uh, you know, religion playing a huge role. People voting along ethnic religions and geopolitical zone we would look at all of this and we still have with us matthew oluku public affairs analyst thank you so much for staying it's with a us pleasure. let's look at the history of weaponizing uh, religion as a tool for politics in nigeria you'd recall that even during the uh 1993 elections which was adjudged the freest and fairest of course that's still questionable but that's not what we're looking at the fact that uh NKO Abiola, Boshit Kashimao Abiola, had a running mate, a Muslim running mate, that uh, King Gibe, who, uh, you know, it was described as a Muslim-Muslim ticket. And people voted along, you know, whatever tribal, uh, you know, sentiments they had. There was no issue of, uh, oh, because it's a Muslim-Muslim ticket, we're not going to vote. And it was said that they were able to garner as much vote has ever seen in the history of Nigeria. What do you think happened? Or do you think that perhaps we've always had these issues, it just hasn't surfaced until now? Um, to be quite honest with you, I think we need to go back to the drawing board as a country. Otherwise, if care is not taken, we are going to have serious crisis in our hands. But looking at the 1993 scenario, um, the reason it was the voting, there were no issues with whether it was a Muslim Muslim ticket is not far-fetched. Because you had a situation where Nigerians were tired of military rule. They wanted, they wanted an alternative. So when the alternative of democracy presented itself and the candidacy of Abiola, who happened to be very popular then, came up, a philanthropist. So people were not looking at whether it was a Muslim Muslim ticket or not, it was a better alternative to military rule. Mm. So that best informed the reason people were not looking at whether Major. it was the same fit or not. But again, I think we, there's need to review some part of our constitution to accommodate concern of um, ethnicity and religion. Because if you are not doing that, you may end up having serious crisis. If you take a look at um, Switzerland, they have three major ethnic groups that make up the, the country. I think German is about 65%, French is about 18%, and some other smaller. But what I'm trying to say in essence is, the way they do their own constitution, in their government, they encompass all the ethnicity in the governance. Mm. So that nobody will start raising an issue. And that way, you do away with the issue of uh, criminal that come with um, tribal issues. So I think as a people, as a government, as a country, beyond borrowing democracy from other places of the world, we should look at what works best for us and design our own constitution in a way that it will address the concern of everybody so that we we'll have, because the, the essence is to have a peaceful coexistence. Mm -hmm. But I would say that it's quite unfortunate that politicians will always explore any area they see, they feel it will give, a, a, it will give them advan advantage. But do you think it's been always there, even before the 1993 elections? Do you think it's always been there, but because, as you said, because we just needed an alternative, we overlooked that? No, the consciousness that I'm a Christian is always in the mind of Christians. The consciousness that I'm a Muslim is always in the mind of Muslims. The consciousness that I'm an idol worshipper is always in, in the mind of idol worshippers. So any adherent you belong, there's only that consciousness that this is where I belong. There's, you don't take that away. Mm. And when the conversation of whether a particular religion should dominate governance comes up, there's always sentiment. You don't take that away. So that's where I was going, that politicians will always explore areas they know it will give them advantage. Mm. Knowing that the issue of election is a, is a thing that has to do with number. So in the calculation of the ruling political party for the purpose of the last presidential election, they knew that it will be of advantage to them, 
or rather the candidate knew that it would be of advantage to him, irrespective of whatever reason they may have adduced, that if they have a Muslim running mate from the north, they are likely going to get more number from the north. Hmm. And they were not on my they were equally aware that the other faith would raise issue. That is why all the time the other faith tried to raise issue, they tried to downplay it and to, try to tell you that the reason they choose uh, their candidate who uh, happens to be the same faith has to do with competence, capacity, character, and all like that. Like we see with the president elect. As, yes, as if, if you go to the other faith, you will not find people who have the capacity, same level of competence. competence character and all that. So it was a calculated attempt, a political strategy to have the number from the north. Mm. But again, that didn't go down well with the other faiths who felt that it was a slight and that it was an attempt to despise the, yes, uh, Christians. And we saw it play out. You don't take that away. Because if you look at the voting pattern in that election, you agree with me that if you had only two candidates, perhaps if the Labour Party was not in the contest, the, there is no way the ruling party would have won that election. Mm. And the major reason would have been because of that same fit uh, ticket. But because you had PDP, you had Labour Party, they polarized or they segmented the votes of the... APC. No, PDP. PDP, rather. That is why APC won. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, APC would and have the crisis within the PDP, too. APC would have learned their lesson of choosing same fate. Mm. So for me, I think as a people, we need to address the, the issue of um, that sentimentalism that has to do with faith, a sentimental attachment of faith through constitutional provision. Mm. So that... It is a constitutional position that empowers or, to, or, or sorry, that compels political parties to say if you are bringing in your candidates, you must balance it in terms of religion. Mm. But do you think we can really address it? Because if you look no, at the fact it is that, a constitutional provision. Mm. It's not about whether we can address but it. There are so many constitutions. We just talked about no, that. Of no, the there are some areas some one, one can afford to overlook, uh, um, breach the constitution. Mm. But when the, where the constitution say you must balance this in terms of the constitutional provision, mm. you know, you, I think you don't have, um, you don't have uh, option, uh, discretion, discretionary power. I give you an instance. In the appointment of ministers, the constitution say you must give one each to, you must give at least one to each, to each state. state. Mm. It's after you have done that, you, you, I think you have 42 ministries. Mm. It's after you have given the 35 or so, or uh, 36 ministries to each and every state before you can start using your discretion to give out other ones. Mm -hmm. So if you now have constitutional provision that has compelled political parties to do balancing in terms of presidency, vice presidency, and most of the um, most of the positions, I think it would be better. I quite agree that we have the issue of uh, federal character. Mm. The federal character is giving parties the some level of discretion. That is why you see after the election, they start looking at the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the City President, Secretary of the Federal Government, they start using all that to balance to mm. see whether it will reflect the grand spread. Mm. All right, at some point in time, the, this administration was seen to be a little bit of um, bias, especially in the appointment of uh, ministers by Buhari. We saw in a case where security apparatus, especially head security chiefs, were headed by a particular region. Would you say that's federal character or would you say that's balancing fairly? No, in the, what you have said it had been seriously criticized. There is no, up to now, I think people are still criticizing this government based on um, that lopsidedness in, yes, lopsidedness in terms of uh, security appointments. When we look at like what you just said, you have about 17 positions that start from the Office of the National Security Advisor Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, Chief of Air Staff, uh, that of GSS, it's about 70 positions. IG of police. IG of police and all that. So it's expected that if you give a position of those security heads, it should equally reflect geographical uh, spread. spread yeah. mm. That notwithstanding, nobody is compelling you to say you must choose a particular individual. Mm. In any area you go to, in any uh, ethnic, ethnic group you look at, you, look, uh, you turn to, you must see somebody who perhaps is loyal to you 
that will do um, do your that will not be uh, do your bidding. Uh, that will, no, no, not necessarily do your bidding. That, be, that may not work against the program of your government. Mm. So okay. for me, I think the a concern you raise, people actually criticize that area heavily under this administration. Uh, all right, let me hold your thoughts. So then we'll come back to continue the conversation. Let's take a break. We'll be back. <laughs> 